Hi everyone, I'm Beth Henry Vance with the DEP's Youth Environmental Program. Today I'm going to talk to Jo Santiago with the United States Forest Service and let her tell you about her career with bird rescue as well as education. Well good afternoon Beth. I'm Jo Santiago with Forest Service International Programs and we are a division of the Forest Service that works actually worldwide as well as domestically and I am a raptor specialist with the Migratory Raptor Program. And I work with six permanently injured raptors, non-releasable raptors. They all have some kind of injury or condition that prevents them from being successfully reintroduced into the wild. And so what happens with birds like that, they are placed with people like myself or zoos or organizations that have federal permits to possess these birds because they are federally protected. And uh, I live with these birds and they live with me for as long as I live or they live, whichever comes first. And the permits are from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And so I'm here today to just talk a little bit about what it is I do um, as a profession. And I, as I said, I work with birds of prey and I, I do rehabilitation. I help the birds that are ill or injured, uh, bring them back into health for release into the wild. I do education programs uh, with many um, organizations, agencies, and schools, and different groups like that. Um, quite a distance away, up to Denver, Colorado, we travel. We travel quite a bit. Uh, and I um, also do rescues, and I do rescues 24-7, 365 days a year, and I've done all this for about 31 years, so I've been out of the wild. And uh, people usually say, well, that's, you know, that's kind of a lot of work, and when do you get a break. Well, I tell you what, when you do what I do and you love to do what I do, as I do, it's not work. It's my mission, my passion, my purpose, and it's my calling. And there's nothing better. What did you um, have to study or um, d did you go to college or anything to get into this line of work? Uh, yes, but that's not the only thing I did. And I knew I wanted to do what I do, this passion I have since the time I was a little kid. So when I was old enough to volunteer at a raptor rehab center out in um, Missouri, Eureka, Missouri, where they had over 200 birds of prey from all over the world, I volunteered to get actual hands-on experience working with these birds because that's where you really get to know the nuts and bolts. And I'm not discrediting school because definitely you should go ahead with your scholastic plans and learn as much as you can about whatever it is that really, really moves you. But getting that hands-on experience is essential. So I volunteered there for a while and that's when you really get to know the birds one-on-one -on -one and how much, like human beings, they really are. And then after that, getting that experience, I did go to school. I went to Glenville State uh, College. I got a, a degree in forestry because that was the closest thing at the time I could get to working with birds. And then I went on to get my a degree in biological sciences and then I went to Marshall University and got my master's in biological sciences. But I was already working as a, a wildlife biologist for the Forest Service at the time. Yeah. So, so really hands-on, go to school, but hands-on experience is essential. And I would recommend if you're interested in doing something like this, and I highly recommend it, uh, get online, find a raptor rehab or wildlife rehab center in the areas of the country that you think you might like to visit and work in and get to know and pick a large facility with a good reputation. Maybe they have an internship program, you know, maybe they can help you out financially. If not, just do it anyway. It's, there's things, there's ways you get paid back in this world that are far, far greater than money. I'll tell you that. So do that and it will be a life-changing experience. Could you tell me a little bit about this bird? Yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce <laughs> uh, my red-tailed hawk. His name is Takikis. Uh, I call him Ty for short. And we have been together on the road as road warriors uh, for 24 years. He's 24 and a half years old. And people ask me, well, how long can red-tailed hawks live? And I'll say, well, They've been known to live in captivity and the wild to 30 years old. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. they, raptors tend to be long-lived. Mm -hmm. awesome. Yes. So why can't your birds be released back into the wild? 
Well, I was, as I was mentioning before, each one has had some kind of injury or condition that uh, they could not fully recover from enough to be let back out into the wild. And in order to be let back out into the wild, you have to be functioning at 100%. And even at 100%, there's so many things going against you. So you have to be in perfect condition. All the birds I have, they are less than perfect condition. They would never make it in the wild. In Ty's case, uh, what happened with Ty years ago, uh, it was his first season. And red tail hawks are big bodied, big chests, big broad wings, big fan tail. Not built for stealth, not built for speed. They're built to fly over open areas or hunt from the edges of roadways. A roadway to a red tail hawk is a buffet. All kinds of good things down there to eat, living and expired. So he saw something that he was interested in, probably a rodent, they go after a lot of rodents, flew down, a car came and hit him and didn't break his wing, but hyperextended it so that it, it uh, permanently damaged his muscles and tendons in his shoulder. And that wing was paralyzed from then on. And the uh, veterinarian, a raptor specialist, looked at it, worked with him, gave him therapy, tried to rehabilitate, rehabilitate it, but eventually came to the conclusion that he would never fly again. So then they called me and asked me if I was interested in taking this red tail hawk on. Uh, because the, the uh, rehabilitators can only keep them for 180 days. After that, they have to be placed or euthanized. You cannot keep them as pets. These birds are not my pets. They're family, they're friends, and they're my teachers, but they are not my pets. Yeah, so that's what happened with Ty. And over time, when I first got him, that wing looked normal. This wing looked absolutely normal like the other one. Over time, what happened to him is the same thing what happened to us. If I had a paralyzed arm and I didn't go to a muscle therapist to keep my muscles strong, my muscles would actually shrink over a long period of time. And slowly, as they shrunk, my arm would draw up like this, happened very slowly. Same thing happened to him. The wing is not amputated. The whole thing is there. It's just folded up. And he still uses it. He uses it for balance when he jumps. And he can jump seven feet on a horizontal, no problem which is like a six-foot man proportionally jumping, taking a single leap and traveling 25 feet before he hit the ground. Wow. Yeah, pretty impressive. And as for um, Freedom, our bald eagle, what happened to him? Uh, when he was 10 weeks old, he was already full size, full power, as bald eagles are, 10 weeks old. Not quite ready to completely leave the nest and fledge. Okay, that happens in about 12 weeks. We don't know if he was pushed out of the nest by a sibling or a storm blew him out of the nest. Somehow he ended up on the ground. And here comes a Doberman pincher and picked a fight with, uh, with freedom. Now, <laughs> now uh, mature bald eagles can hold their own against coyotes. Yeah. <laughs> They're pretty powerful animals. And so they got into a fight. And what happened is that dog reached around and grabbed freedom by his tail feathers and ripped his entire tail, feather, all his tail feathers out. And consequently, that permanently damaged the feather follicles so that whenever he grows in feathers, they come, they come in at odd angles or they come part way out and then they drop off or they come in and they look normal, but they're brittle huh. and they break easily. And can a bird fly without tail feathers? Yes, they cannot turn very well or stop very well. Again, you have to be at 100% to even have a chance. And about, I think it is 80% uh, of, or 50, maybe it was 50%, anyway, a high percentage of bald eagles and the rest of these guys die their first year, a very high percentage their first year. It's that tough to make it. So that's why freedom is in captivity. And you have four other birds as well? I have four others, yeah, a total of six. I have two falcons, a merlin, an uh, American kestrel, and I have a broadwing hawk. And I have a little eastern screech owl about that tall named Isaiah. And do you also have another bird to show us today? Yes, I do. I have uh, the national symbol of the United States of America. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. And we will get to meet that bird in just a minute. It's okay. He's a little excited. We're in some place totally new, totally new. So of course, uh, as predators, they want to look around, check out 
what's going on all around them. They want to look for danger all the time because although these birds have been in captivity, some for a very long time, they are still raptors. They are still wild. So they have that inc inclination to just look for danger all the time. Look around, get, get a sense of their bearing. Totally unlike human beings. <laughs> well, we're just staring at our phones. <laughs> totally vulnerable to anything that could happen. <laughs> we have a lot to learn from them. So, so this is Freedom, uh, our bald eagle. And Freedom is on loan to Forest Service international programs from the American Eagle Foundation in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Yeah, that's a nonprofit, and they had the largest collection of non-releasable eagles, I believe, in the world. Yeah. So that's a very special partnership, and through them, we're able to take freedom to our veterans. Oh, At nice. Walter Reed, the USO, the Armed Forces Retirement Home in Washington, D.C. Uh, we are the Migratory Raptor Program, and including Freedom, we are a regular part of the therapy program for PTSD and substance How cool. abuse veterans uh, at the Lewis A. Johnson VA Medical Center and have been for years now. Yes, yeah, so we're part of their therapy program. And some, some of those veterans respond to these birds in a way they don't respond to therapy in general. Yeah. There's something about these birds, the rafters, that just reach down into us and address something and reaches in places human beings can't, can't reach. It's as simple as that. That's why people look up in the sky and they, they pause and they say, oh my gosh, look at that. And to, to, to strangers, to strangers around, they'll say, check that out, check that out. Strangers they wouldn't even be bothered looking at. All of a sudden, they're communicating. They bring people together. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that's Freedom, and he is 21 years old. He can live to be 50. Wow. And I've had him for, uh, we just celebrated our fifth year together. Uh, and I, the, the partnership is actually indefinite. So, uh, so if I have him for as long as I live, he, he, at this point in time, he can outlive me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, but he's an excellent amb ambassador uh, for our environment, for migratory species, uh, for the health of, of our environment. Um, for, and all and all the birds are excellent ambassadors as well. Yeah. So. So are eagles uh, doing better as a population in West Virginia? They are doing better. Yeah. They are not what they once were, but they are definitely doing better. But we still need to be vigilant because uh, there's they they still have they still suffer negative effects from habitat degradation. People still shoot them, even though it's a federal and state offense. They still get poisoned. They uh, get electrocuted. Um, uh, there's all kinds of things that still happen to them out in the wild, as the other birds. So we, you know, we have to keep, we have to be vigilant about it. We have to be responsible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for showing us these amazing birds and so for welcome. your time. And I really appreciate it. Oh, you are so very welcome. Take care. <laughs>